All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. Okay, can everyone see this okay? Thumbs up? Okay. All right, so thanks everybody for coming. My name is Dr. Jen Polito. I'm one of the doctors here at Hear Care. And thank you for coming to this talk. Um, this is a talk we haven't had before. So this is an exciting one. And we are going to talk about tinnitus management. So let's talk a little bit exactly what is tinnitus. So tinnitus or tinnitus, people pronounce it different ways. It's tomato, tomato, whichever way you want to say it. Um, but basically tinnitus is a sound that you hear in either one or both of your ears that isn't caused by an external sound. So it's something that you only hear in your head or in your ears that isn't caused by a sound that's out in the environment. So no one else can hear this sound except you. Tinnitus can sound um, like a lot of things. Um, a lot of people do have tinnitus in our clinic and, and the most common type of tinnitus that we hear is a, is a ringing sound, like a high pitch ringing sound. Um, but we also get people say buzzing, um, humming, crickets, they hear the ocean, they hear a whooshing sound. Um, there are a handful of people that even hear music in their ears too. So all of that is tinnitus. It, it doesn't matter what, the, what it sounds like, that's what it's called. And it usually affects around 15 to 20 percent of people. So what is the cause of tinnitus? it's usually caused by some sort of underlying condition. The most common type of condition that causes tinnitus is some sort of hearing loss. Um, even if it's just mild um, or obviously more severe, usually tinnitus is a part of that. Or even if there's any sort of damage in the ear, sometimes people hear tinnitus. So sometimes um, people even with normal hearing hear tinnitus sometimes. That could mean that there's some damage in their ears, but it's not showing up as a hearing loss yet, but there is some weakness in there. Um, I know I get tinnitus in my left ear once in a while that comes and goes. And as far as I know, my hearing's okay, but um, I think I've had some noise exposure in the past and things like that. So I do hear it once in a while. Um, some people have an injury to their ear, which could cause tinnitus, whether they had a perforation in their ear or, um, you know, some, some using a Q-tip or something like that. Any sort of injury can cause tinnitus. Um, problem with the circulatory system. So what I mean by that is um, if you have issues with uh, blood, pl blood pressure or any condition that alters uh, blood flow, um, up or down to the ear canal, it can cause um, um, tinnitus and medication as well. There are certain medications that can cause tinnitus and I'm gonna go over the certain ones that are, are known for it. So once you have tinnitus, there are some things that actually can make it worse. And these are things that most people, most of my patients don't know about. So these are some of the things we want to avoid, especially if tinnitus is very bothersome to you. So the first thing is probably self-explanatory that noise exposure can make the tinnitus worse. It can also make your hearing loss worse as well. So that's definitely something you want to ignore or use hearing protection if you are going to be around loud noise. Caffeine is a big one. So people that um, drink a lot of coffee, soda, things like that, that can actually make that tinnitus worse. Salt intake. So if people um, don't watch their, their food and their diet, um, you know, they eat a lot of salt, that can make it worse. As I mentioned earlier, higher low blood pressure can, can make it worse. Um, stress is a big one. 
So sometimes people come in and they say, you know, my ears are really ringing today. And I'll be like, um, you know, what did you do today? Or is there something going on in your life? If someone just went through a big move or, um, you know, lost a loved one, anything that, that causes you stress um, can, can make it worse. And medications as well. So sometimes if we alter these things, these factors, we can actually reduce the level of the tinnitus. So let's talk a little bit about medication. So there are certain um, medications that are known to have tinnitus as a side effect. Aspirin is one of them, but um, it really just does depend how long you are taking the aspirin and how high of a dose. Um, so when I was making this presentation, they were saying that if you were on aspirin at a really high dose for a long period of time, over time, that can cause tinnitus in your ears. Certain antibiotics does cause tinnitus as well. Um, when we talk, we are talking about certain antibiotics and we are talking about the very strong antibiotics. Um, so we have, we test a lot of patients here from infectious disease that have very serious lung infections and things like that. These patients are on these antibiotics and we have to monitor them to make sure that um, their hearing isn't changing or that they don't have tinnitus. Um, so, the bit, some of the big names are gentamicin, um, amicacin, anything that ends in a myosin or mycin tends to be um, what we call ototoxic to the ears. So ototoxic means um, it can damage the ears. So again, these are very strong antibiotics that most people are not on, but these strong ones can cause tinnitus. Um, there are certain anti-malarial drugs that cause tinnitus and chemotherapy too um, is another um, thing that we monitor when someone's on chemotherapy. We like to monitor their hearing throughout the therapy treatment just to make sure that the hearing isn't changing too. Because again, these are very strong medications that can cause damage to the ears and that damage can cause hearing, uh, tinnitus. So what is the treatment for tinnitus? So the treatment of the tinnitus depends on what the tinnitus is caused by, what is the underlying health condition. I will tell you, um, I'm sure you've heard your doctor tell you that there is no specific cure for tinnitus. So it's not like, you know, you have it and then I can give you a vitamin or pill or procedure or anything like that to make the tinnitus go away. Um, I know there are infomercials of like vitamins and medicines you can take, but there's really nothing that has been shown to really eradicate the tinnitus. The, on, the only treatment for it is to reduce your symptoms um, by treating the underlying cause. So these are some of the ways that we can um, reduce the symptoms um, and help, um, help you not hear the tinnitus as much as you do now. The first thing, the main thing that we do is, is hearing aids. Um, I know most of you have hearing aids already. It's been shown that um, treating the underlying hearing loss actually helps with the tinnitus. So again, even if someone just has a very mild hearing loss, but their tinnitus is really bothering them and really loud, we fit them with hearing aids. And sometimes just a little bit of amplification helps you not hear the tinnitus as well. Um, so just wearing hearing aids alone and treating the hearing loss is probably our number one treatment for tinnitus. And most hearing devices now have what's called a tinnitus master. So what that means is it's a hearing aid. So it treats the tinnitus, 
I mean, it treats the hearing loss, but it also has a masker. So it plays um, some sort of sound. It can play white noise. It can play ocean sounds. It can play music, um, certain tones. And it's at a very soft level so that you don't notice the tinnitus as much. Um, so that's what we're trying to do is to kind of train your brain to not focus on the tinnitus and eventually your, your brain will tune it out. So having the hearing aids plus this masker turned on has helped a lot of people who are very bothered by tinnitus. Um, so once that sound is playing, whether it's white noise or music, when someone starts speaking to them, that noise actually shuts off. So it doesn't affect your ability to communicate with people. If someone starts speaking with, with you, you could still hear them. But once it's quiet and there's no one speaking, that's when that sound kind of comes up again. Because in quiet environments is when you hear it the most. So that's sort of what the masker does. Um, I think I'm going to talk a little bit more on the next screen too. Um, earwax removal, very rarely um, earwax can cause tinnitus, but it does happen. If you have a big plug of wax in your ears, that can cause some ringing. Um, so if you remove the wax, that has helped some people. Um, change in the medication. So like I said, if some of those strong antibiotics is causing hearing loss or tinnitus, sometimes letting that doctor know that it's affecting their hearing they may have to change the medication or the dose. Um, lifestyle changes. So again, that's um, sometimes diet um, with the salt and caffeine, um, the managing your stress level, all of that can help. Um, I, I already talked about noise and, and um, just keeping away from noise, um, but there's also counseling too, which I'll talk about. So this is just another slide talking about the hearing aids and tinnitus support. So most hearing devices, most manufacturers have some sort of tinnitus support already built into their hearing aids. Um, I have Oticon, Widex, and Phonak here. Um, so again, this is the hearing aid plus that masker that's, um, that's in there. I will say majority of the time just treating the hearing loss alone with just the hearing aids is enough. I probably have a handful of patients where I actually have turned on that masker because they were really bothered by it and they needed some extra support. So I turned on some soft level sound in the background to help them ignore the tinnitus. Um, so it is available, but I know um, us here, we don't use it often because the hearing aids alone are, are great enough for, for ignoring the tinnitus. I think some of the manufacturers has an app like this Phonak one where you can control the sound that you're hearing, the level and things like that. So if there's a day where your tinnitus is worse, you can turn up that masker um, or if it's better, you can turn it down or sometimes the tinnitus changes sound and you can change like the sound that that helps mask it better. So that's, it gives you more control, which is great. Um, noise suppression. Okay, so white noise machines. So this is something that people can use at nighttime because hearing aids do work really well during the day. But what about at nighttime when you take the hearing aids out you're in a quiet room, you're trying to sleep, and then your tinnitus goes crazy. Um, so what we tell our patients is to try to have some sort of sound playing in the background. So avoiding quiet is the main thing because when it's quiet, you hear the tinnitus, you focus on it. The more you focus on it, it's going to get louder and the harder it is for you to ignore it. So avoiding quiet at all times is a big thing. So when at nighttime, when you're trying to sleep, it's important to have some sort of sound. 
I sleep with a fan going. That's a good one because that's sort of like white noise. So any fan noise is really good. These are actually sound machines that you plug in and you can pick the sound. You can pick the level. So playing something like that so your brain doesn't focus on the tinnitus is good. Um, there are even some that go under your pillow, you know, so it's right there while you sleep. There are a lot of apps on your phone that you can download that have white noises. So this can help you when you're not wearing the hearing aids and trying to sleep. Um, so you're not just sitting in the quiet room listening to the tinnitus. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about counseling too. So some people are very, very bothered by tinnitus. It can be a serious problem for people. So say they have hearing loss, they already have hearing aids, you know, they have the masker turned on, they're doing everything that I just explained and they're still really bothered by it. Some people have trouble even doing daily activities. They can't concentrate at work. They can't sleep, they can't do anything because they just hear this sound in their head. So that's when we have to take um, a different route. And there's two types of counseling routes that we can do. Um, so the first one is called tinnitus retraining therapy or called TRT. So this is done by certain audiologists. Um, there are actually certain um, clinics that specialize in TRT. Um, I know at Hear Care we don't have a program like this, um, but there are clinics that do specialize in it. So what that mean, TR, what TRT means is um, combined sound masking along with counseling. So that includes wearing the hearing aids with the masker, but also some counseling in there. So what they do is um, they basically try and tell you to relax. They try and reduce the anxiety and stress that you feel from hearing the tinnitus. So they teach you deep relaxation exercises, stretch management. Um, they try and eliminate the patient's anxiety. Um, because like I said, the more stressed and tense you are about the tinnitus, it will get louder and it won't go away. So you have to relax, um, realize it's there, but it's not hurting you. It's not, you know, gonna, um, it's not like a serious thing. Once people kind of wrap their heads around what it actually is, they don't have anxiety about it anymore and then it, it, it will go away. Um, and then if that's still not enough, then we make other referrals for um, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. So there actually are mental health professionals or psychologists that work with people with tinnitus. So this is outside of the audiology realm. This is a different um, professional, but they can help these people learn coping techniques to make the tinnitus symptoms less bothersome. So it's just a different type of counseling, but it's very similar, reducing the stress, um, reducing the anxiety about the tinnitus, because um, a lot of it is psychological. A lot of it is we just focus on it because we hear it. And, um, but you know, the more you focus on it, the worse it gets. So it's just kind of like a vicious cycle. So um, some people need a lot of help with it. There, there are a lot of people that, that suffer from it that I've seen, and sometimes we have to make referrals. But most of the time, people can manage it. Most people say, you know, during the day, I'm fine because I stay busy and things like that, which is great. Um, keep doing that. Try to avoid quiet environments. Um, use your hearing aids, and after a while, your brain doesn't focus on the tinnitus, and it'll kind of be in the background. So it's okay if it's there, but we just don't want it to, to rule your life and prevent you from doing the things that you love. So 
So in summary, tinnitus is usually present due to an underlying issue, and the treatment of it focuses on training your brain to ignore the tinnitus. There's no cure for it, so it will be there, but we can kind of put it in the back burner and not focus on it. Um, so it's the best thing if, if you or anyone else says they hear sounds in their ears, it's, it's always best to go see either their doctor or an audiologist to find out what the underlying cause is. Is it hearing loss? Is it wax? Is it medication? Because a lot of that tinnitus can be reduced if we just find out what is causing it. All right, so that is my presentation.